Hello everybody and welcome to the second half of the wide body kit video here at King of Titan Racing. In today's video I'm going to be going over all of the adjustments and additional items needed to get the car to look the way it does now compared to how it finished in the last video. Then there's the changes I've made because I've discovered some much better ways of doing things that will make life a lot easier. And then finally I'll talk about the price and how much it actually costs to do all of this. So let's get started. The obvious place to start of course being the filler covering the entire front end of the car. So areas like this I raised slightly just to meet the bonnet and then smoothed out to match the shape of the kit. Other areas though like around the lights I've got about a half a centimetre from here to here just raising it up to fill what was an enormous gap and again it goes from about half a centimetre here down to nothing there on a smoothed out gradient just to fill that panel gap a bit. And of course the front bumper did have that big groove in it which is now completely gone and that's all nice and smooth and again raised up to meet where the bonnet comes. Around the back of the car you can see I've done the exact same thing with the rear lights and the fuel filler cap needed quite a bit as well to get it to raise and meet the level of the kit. Behind the edges of all the panels that aren't bumpers I put a silicon sealant which just really settles the part on the car. One of the biggest challenges you're going to have with trying to get the wide body kit to look good on the car is the wheel and tyre setup choice. Now I've opted for 17 inch wheels compared to the stock 15 inch and yet there is still an enormous gap between the rim and the body kit. Now I've chosen a slightly higher profile tyre and that has filled that gap really nicely. And I've made that decision using a website called willtheyfit.com. On there, you put in your offset, the wheel width, your spacer size, the diameter of the wheel, the profile of the tyre you're considering, and that visualises exactly what space that new setup is going to take compared to your original. And it makes one of the most complicated processes very, very simple. Now, I got these wheels from rotorshop.co.uk and they also put me onto that website. If you're looking for new wheels for your car, reach out to them. The team there really want to help you make the right decision for your build. For my spacers, I'm using a one inch in the rear and a custom two inch in the front. So if I was going to start this again from scratch, there is a few changes I'd make. And the first one being these quick release bumper fasteners. I put them on the sides of the bumper on both sides and they very simply work with a click and off comes the bumper. Now this is still attached with four bolts that run along here. But if you have one of these, then you can get all four of those off in about 30 seconds. Meaning that, as you can see, you can take the bumper off from being fully secured to being completely separate from the car in well under a minute. And that's incredibly useful if you're at the track or you just need to do some quick work behind there or make some quick adjustments. In order to fit the quick release button, I fabricated a bracket and then riveted that to the body panel. I then adjusted this bracket so that the bumper is kept in line with this line here. And also down here you'll notice there is no big chunky box of metal protecting this. I decided that was a terrible idea and threw it away. Instead I found a piece of PPF by 3M which protects and wraps all the way around this. A knife is going to struggle to get through that so that will protect very nicely from anything being thrown up off the wheel. Now time for that big question. How much did this all cost? You can quite easily spend £10,000 wide bodying a car like this. Now I didn't and I did it much cheaper than that because I did all the work myself and I didn't outsource anything. But there's still some big ticket items that you just can't avoid spending the money on. So let's go through the list and we'll start with the kit itself. Now you can spend between one and £5,000 on this same kit depending on the manufacturer. I wasn't really comfortable sending all that money overseas to a company I've never worked with or met before. So I went for that £1,000 entry level kit. But that just puts the bodywork in the box. To get it here, I had to pay another £200 in shipping and then another £200 in taxes. You'd think that would be it, but it's not. When you ship in a body kit or probably anything of that size, you have a port fee to pay. That's a hidden cost that you don't find out about until you want to have your cargo released to you. That was another £400. So ultimately, it was £1,900 to get the kit in my possession. I then had to do the filler, the 
undersealer and the fiberglassing and some other consumables so I rolled all of that up to about £200 and then it needed new wheels and that was £800 for this set of rotors I had the spacers put on so that's another £500 and then with the grills, bolts and because I replaced every bolt on the car and the quick release poppers that gives me about £1,650 for all those items so all in all I managed to wide body this car for £3,750 which is a lot of money but actually an incredibly cheap way to do this much work so the next stage of course is to make it look like a car that's had that much spent on it so we're going to be painting it if this has been useful and you've enjoyed watching this video and the last one as well hit that subscribe button it's been great to have you come along the journey with us and as always it makes a massive difference to us as a channel so like I said we'll see you soon and let's get this thing painted. There's a vote going on on Instagram right now. Red, black, blue. Have your say, and we'll see you soon.